And uh, the major story here on the front page of the Nation newspaper, tension in Kogi over gunmen's attack on uh, resident electoral commissioner's residence. APC demands arrest of SDP candidate Ajaka over incident. Uh, says party trying to cover heist committed in Kogi East. We are not responsible for attack, SDP insists. Uh, police confirm attack on INEC officials' home. Another story here, FRSC finds Nemasa 500 million naira over 2018 financial accounts. Suspends Jamal's uh, for delays registration numbers. Senate to federal government block allocations to unelected local government councils. Lawmakers tell Alia to restore sacked binary councils. Upper chamber passes 2024 appropriation bill for second reading house also. Now five escaped deaths as uh, NAV helicopter crash lands in Port Harcourt. That happened uh, yesterday. CBN freezes accounts without BBN, NIN, from March 2024. Nigeria, Germany signed 12,000 megawatt power deal. Who has what story here? The Nigerian <coughs> Air Force um, helicopter crashed yesterday in Port Harcourt, but Thankfully, the five crew members who were on board survived. Yeah. And this happened at about 7.45 a.m., shortly after the aircraft took off for an operation against all thieves in River State. This uh, was disclosed by the NAVS spokesperson, Air Commodore Edward Gabwet. And he said that um, the crew members are currently um, being attended to at NAF Medical Center in Port Harcourt. He also said that the chief of air staff, Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar, was on his way to Patakot to assess the situation for himself and to give them further directives. He went on to, to say that uh, incidents of this nature are yet again a grim reminder of the dangers associated with military flying and um, the risks NAF pilots go through. And um, he said, despite all that, they will continue to protect the nation. So we are thankful that the crash did not claim the lives mm. of the crew members. Mm. So. We're having a lot of um, aviation mistakes in recent times. It's worrisome because Quite. thankfully the ones that have been happening now haven't been, they've not, they haven't, we haven't had fatalities, but yeah. we have to, the aviation minister, the president needs to check on the aviation minister and put him on a checklist. There was a meeting. complained there was that a meeting he wasn't appropriate for that job. This week, mm -hmm. there was a meeting this week where the minister met with you know, heads of agencies with regards to the aviation sector to look into this matters, what really is going on, especially the Nigeria, uh, is, uh, aside from Nigeria Air Force, then the United Nigeria, the incident that also happened where they landed in Asaba, in as against yeah, Abuja. Yeah. So mm -hmm. all of these issues, it's, like it's quite embarrassing. Yes, exactly. Runway. Ah. Yeah. It's quite embarrassing. And then we have had, you know, airlines overshooting the runway as well. There's so many issues going on. And so he had a meeting with them. The outcome of that meeting, we are yet to know. And then he also spoke with regards to the matter of Nigeria Air that has mm. generated a lot of controversies. And then he spilled some beans. And Nigerians have been reacting. But we hope yeah. that in the coming days that something will be done Absolutely. as quickly as possible. So I have um, 2,209 pregnant women, eight infants, test positive for HIV mm? AIDS in Niger State. Oh, wow. And so How this come? figures, 2,000, over 2,000 women, pregnant women as we speak, have tested positive um, with HIV. And the story went on to say that these are the figures between January and October. Mm. This year? This year, this 2023. <sighs> but currently in the state, over 34,000 people are living with HIV that have come out, that are tested, and are currently receiving treatment. Wow. So you can imagine the number of people that, have, that the government does not have the statistics mm -hmm. of. And the reasons are that there are lots of female sex workers in the state. Oh, wow. There are gays and transgenders in the state. Then a lot of people abuse drug <clears throat> through the injecting of needles by Yay. themselves. Mm. And drug so because abuse. of that, they Substance are able abuse. to Trans transmit mm. the you know. virus through ah, that. Person. And enlightenment also is a major concern also for this particular state. And so the government has come up to say that 
they are hopeful that something can be done about it. And that um, mm. currently, 37 healthcare institutions within the state mm -hmm. are treating, can test positively. Mm -hmm. So most of the health centers, even within the state, cannot test for HIV. Are you serious? So even when they go, the results are inaccurate. Wow. So there are lots uh -huh. of things that... There are many that, issues. Yes. Mm -hmm. Within the state. you taking your time, I was wondering, ah, this one that she's taking her time, <laughs> but I think it's important. Yes. yes. So, so even if they go, the probability of them getting, getting the, the accurate right result. result is another concern within wow. the state. You have a medical crisis, a health crisis in the country. Absolutely, because we, we just saw a report where Lasso said they're shutting down a certain number of words because of um, Jackpot yes. syndrome. A lot of these persons have traveled outside the country. So the qualified staffers that should do this, this job, test. a majority of them are no longer in the country or they have moved outside of the state to get better paying exactly. jobs. And that's even so, Lagos, so you speaking, did you see? No, so I'm also, I'm Niger talking state. about Niger State. In a Niger State, it will in Niger State, it will in Niger be worse. State, some of them would have left Niger yes. and come to Lagos, uh, or, come come to to Lagos or go to go any to other states to get better paying jobs. So, so that might just be the situation, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, let, I think we need to quickly go on a break. Oh, okay. It's, uh, we, yes, we need to go on a break. <laughs> when we return, we'll continue looking through the newspaper headlines. All right, thank you for staying with us. We're still looking through the newspaper headlines. Uh, the Nation newspaper is still where we're at. And I quickly want to take this story, which I believe it's a worrisome development now, talking about teenagers killing certain persons. Mm -hmm. Now, another story, a teenager, Mubarak Akadjuri, narrated how and why he killed a 62-year-old <laughs> retired head teacher. Um, Mrs. Adam Olekun, after stealing her phone, valued at 66,000 naira. Mm. He said that um, wow. the deceased had caught him and he used his tool uh, to hit her continuously and, and then she, she died. He, he went to steal her phone, basically. And unfortunately, when the deceased caught him, uh, while he had stolen the phone, she held him. And in an attempt to escape, he used a wooden stool to hit her head. But the old woman kept shouting for help. Thereafter, he hit her repeatedly on her head until she fell uh -uh. and died. It's a sad one. He's been remanded at uh, the Olokuta Correctional Center pending the outcome of uh, the decision by the courts. But um, it's quite worrisome that we are seeing these teenage killings. Mm -hmm. Because on another newspaper, I saw a another. story where another teenager, remember the professor too, another teenager killed somebody for something. So I'm wondering what really is giving birth to this rise of teenage killers, so to speak. We need to begin to look inwards, the home front, what really is the issue? I mean, 66,000 naira. Only God knows how long she worked for to buy that phone, how, much she, uh, how, she had to, how long she had to pay for that phone. And now you killed, you went to steal the phone. If she is calling for help, why not return the phone? Did you have to yes, kill her? I'm sorry, ma'am. You kept Me. hitting her, hitting her. You saw that she was perhaps losing her breath or something was happening, and you continued. People have become hardened. Hardened. Yeah. Is it the challenges hardship? of life or something, or yeah. over watching violent movies or drugs or heartlessness has mm. gotten higher in our country. It's really, really bad. I want to take the story about CBN. Um, I, I like following financial um, stories because. I play in that space, and the CBN has said that they are going to be freezing accounts that do not have BVN or NIN starting from the 24th of March. So they mm. said that they are also going to be doing a verification of accounts between now and then for those that have irregularities within their NIN or BVN. Um, mm. I noticed that they said NIN or BVN. I wish it was the case of both um, because I know like three mm. people in the past one week whose phone got stolen and their account was empty oh, via wow. transfer and we can't trace the persons that got this account they said they used some new um, fintech Tech. accounts so you mm. can't trace them because those ones don't do due diligence or kyc like they don't know their customers so this is a very important move if you have an account that does not have a bvn or nin linked to it your account will be frozen that means there's restricted no transaction will take place and if you're if you have monies in within that account, you can't access it until you comply with you do the right thing. BVN or NIN. So you have enough time now before you will say in March that 
they are holding. We'll start holding seeing the, the usual thing, mm. rushing. Mm. Yeah, that minute, time. You know Nigerians, whereas last minute, minute decisions. Decision. But there were accounts that were frozen because of BVN issues. Yeah. Yeah. So, so did they leave them to... Yeah. So some persons do not learn. Some people, perhaps, they still release yeah. those accounts. Maybe those ones cleared those accounts. And then and there are still some ones. people. Mm -hmm. We we'll always have people, you know, opening accounts on a regular basis. So we need to ensure that those accounts are linked to NI and BVN. So you can trace transactions. You can do the needful. It's even in their best interest. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Funny enough. Let's move now to the front page of the Punch newspaper. And the major story here, banks fear rush as CBN bars customers without BVN, NIN in April. You just took that story. Apex Bank orders electronic revalidation of BVN, NIN attached to accounts. Wallets January the 31st. Account holders others fear new round of hardship, Naira scarcity. Now, Dad Proud, I repeated his academic feat 25 years after uh, a CU first class graduate is saying, Tinubu has political will to revive Ajakuta Steel, DG, limbs for penny, untold ordeals of casual workers who lost body parts, lives on duty. This is a sad tale. I'm not wayward, blessing CEO is saying. All right. Federal government may raise workers' pension in 2024, which is commission. Passport ready three weeks after capturing, says immigration boss. An interesting development. Well, budget National Assembly laments lack of details passes bill December the 19th. Who has what story? Okay, so Lagos State Task Force has said it will crush not fewer than 130 motorcycles that have been seized by their, the, their staff in the Alakija area of Lagos State. And the reason is because these bikes have constituted a nuisance within the environment. And this was made known by the chairman of the Lagos State Environmental and Special Offenses Agency, Shola Jejeloui. And one of the things he said was that after discussing with these people, stop moving on the highways, stop doing all of this, and they don't no, listen. They, yeah. The next thing they have to do is to enforce the law, yes. which is um, about seizing the their bikes. bikes. And in some of those instances, there are times where even um, passengers will be on the bike and it's always very, very rough. But they say they don't have any other choice, that that's what they have to do. And so um, the government has also said outrightly that they don't have any plans to use these bikes, that they are going to crush them totally, and they're not going to um, feel sad about it. Of which the Okada riders staged a protest. And in that protest, burn down. They, yes, they wanted to burn down mm. their trucks. And so it was really all messy at the end of the day. But the government is still saying that we, are, that as we say, we are not <laughs> stopping. We are going on with this. And until you guys listen, I always pose a risk of loss of lives to you. So your, your life is in our best interest. And so um, as a result of that... I think that another measure can be taken because... Still on it. I was driving yesterday mm. and then I saw... I was in traffic and then I saw this bike man facing one way on Lekki Ekbe Expressway. Ah. Mm -hmm. And he was not even at the edge. He was, he was in the middle. Was, yeah, and he was not doing like this. Like you push your move. Like imagine, me that I'm coming head on. Like, so why should I be looking out for a bike, bike man facing me head on? Very, very sad. Very dangerous. Mm. And there was, there was a passenger at the back. Oh. Mm -hmm. The risk to life. I was just huge. shaking my head. I was at the other side. I was just watching them. They were doing this. Okay. I, I, before, I used to feel pity for these people. But now I don't because the it's people crazy. that die. People that yeah, die. Yeah, As a result of this, yes. their activity. I, I want to take a feel good story. <laughs> so, Eniola Oluwa Gono um, graduated from Crawford University with a first class in mass communication. That's not a big deal, right? The real big deal is that 25 years ago, her father, father graduated from University of Benin with a first class degree uh -huh. in mass communication uh -huh. as well. So uh -huh. it's for, it's, the father went on Facebook, posted this very long story detailing how proud he is of I'm her proud. achievement. And she was of the opinion that her mom is proud too, even though we didn't see her mom's because her mom also finished as the best graduating student 
in her class. Oh, oh, God, so it's wrong. Oh, it's wrong. Oh, wrong. Oh, like, if you want to so marry somebody, <laughs> that was all about your friends. <laughs> 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 if you go to the yellow book, just go. I'm telling you. Class, <laughs> class, so that means your children will be better off. Yeah. 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 I want to take this story. Um, Ogun State trained about 12,626 farmers in improved rice cassava technology. Uh, that's a good one from Ogun State. Again, last week we spoke about Ogun State doing something about for women and babies. Yes. And yes. now they are said to have trained 12,626 farmers, improved rice cassava technology. And uh, this, it's about production technology for cassava and rice under the FGN OGSG Value Chain Development Program. Uh, this was revealed by the Acting State Program Coordinator, Mrs. Um, we are seeing that the government is looking at diversifying the economy, mm -hmm. basically, and states are keying into that idea of diversifying the economy. It's good to see that um, Ogun State has done something to train about 12,000 farmers to look at this. Uh, we hope, we hope that um, we'll see better results Absolutely. with regards to agriculture. Right. So yeah. the Nigerian Immigration Service on Friday said... Um, Barring unforeseen uh, technical issues, Nigerians would get their passports three weeks after the day of submission. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Controller General, Mrs. Uh, this was uh, disclosed by the Controller General, Mrs. Caroline Adepoju, and she said this while she was unveiling the Igbubu passport office, front office in Igbubu Bayeko local government in Ikorodu. So Ikorodu, people now have a, a passport office. They don't have to go oh, all nice. the way to Ikoyi or the Ninja. nearest one to them. And then she said that uh, this was her first assignment and she was assuring Nigerians that within three weeks, without any technical issues, you'll be able to get your um, passport. She said when applying, it is important to use the details on your NIN because your NIN details would be on your new passport. So you do not want to use contradicting information mm -hmm. that the, uh, the passport office cannot pull up. Yeah, tightly the noose. Absolutely. Mm. And then she also said, she also reminded uh, the people or reminded us that we should always apply for our passport renewal six months ahead. Because mm, there are people, yeah, not doing it last minute. There are people who have been denied visas because their passports did not have at least six months uh, validity on it. So the chairman and the Oba of Igbubo were quite happy at the development, <coughs> even though they are saying that they should upgrade the passport office soon to where the passports can be printed. But they are promising that the facility will be well protected mm -hmm. and they told vandals to stay away. From there, mm. okay. So that's that's a it's good it's music to <laughs> the that's, ears of a majority of Nigerians yeah. because we've been seeing some results here and there. The minister yeah. is actually working, working, and Nigerians have said yes. This is one minister that we will remember for a long time because of how he has started. We yeah. hope he can sustain that. In fact, a lot of people did not know the function of. Minister of Interior. Mm. Until, 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 until passports, <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> you want to break yeah. them because we need them all <laughs> public holidays <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's good. Anyway, let's quickly move to Saturday's sun right now. Uh, to the the major story here: 2024 budget. Tinubu allocates 146 billion naira to presidency, 197 billion naira to national assembly. And then uh, defense gets 1.57 trillion naira, NJC 165 billion. And uh, the writer here says 9.92 trillion naira, non debt recurrent expenditure. Others worrisome ex man boss is speaking. NCAA lifts suspension on United Nigeria Airline aircraft. Uh, security forces Amoteku set to clear all your forest. Uh, that's insecurity. Now, military eliminates over 180 terrorists, nabs 204 others in one week. Uh, defense headquarters is saying this. Five chief deaths as NAV helicopter crashes in River State. We took that story earlier. Now, KYC, CBN, others, banks to block accounts without BVN, NIN, government attack residents of Kogi resident electoral commissioner who has what story. Mm. His, um, insecurity challenges um, have led to a lot of farmers um, not being able to go to their farms in Oyo State. And Oyo, is, Oyo has one of the land. largest arable land. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to deal with the insecurity challenge, the uh, police, military, and Amoteko are set to clear the Oyo forest. There was um, 
a little clash that happened in a, this this clash happened between in the Iwajowa local government area. It led to the death of three people, including the killing of an Amotekun officer. Wow. And it was because they allowed cattle to graze on the mm. farmer's plantation. The security called for help of Amotekun. The Amotekun officer came there to chase out the cattle. In between that, it led to um, a killing. Um, three people now died, including that Amotekun officer who was just there to do his job. Oh, wow. So now they want to do like a sweep of most of the forest, ensure that we don't have um, reducing kidnapping, banditry, and other forms of crime that are being perpetrated using the forest. Mm -hmm. mm, I have this noise pollution story Quickly. in yeah. um, Enugu State. And so the government has met with um, the owners of leisure spots, so 75 of them. And they said, the government said that we don't mind the nightlife. The nightlife is good for the economy of Enugu State. Mm -hmm. But in a case where our children cannot sleep, mm. our children cannot do their homework, they're standing, if they live in a story building, they are looking at the clubs, What's going looking on? at what is happening, it affects their minds. So as a result of that, they're going to clamp down on leisure sports owners, especially for those that have not kept the, the details of the approvals given to them. Mm. So open air spaces are going to be clamped down now. Mm in a bid to ensure that the sanity of the state is preserved. And the government went on to say that for institutions or organizations that flout this, they're going to give them a five million naira fine Only. once they close them down before they are able to reopen them again. Oh, wow. So I think noise pollution is not just mm -hmm. just. I remember the, the story also. of the man that went into the church <laughs> with four dogs because they had been disturbing. <laughs> noise <laughs> pollution. Yes. Because of noise pollution, he went to attack them. That what? Kill a day. Yeah. <laughs> when is <laughs> Enugu State? Yeah, we we'll see what Lagos uh, State is doing. Yeah. For instance, Lagos State is shutting down mm. these businesses that have refused to comply right. with the directives. Mm -hmm. Let me quickly take this story about um, persons living with uh, disabilities. The agonies. Um, they talked about how the situation of the economy has make it, made it difficult for them. Uh, because of their limited ability, they cannot do as much. Oh. We see persons having five businesses, mm. hustling here and there. They don't have that opportunity. And so it's difficult to, for them to really thrive or survive in the country with the current economic situation. So they are asking the government to look into their plight. Yes, mm. we know that the government has been looking at the various sections of the society with Recently, the federal government talked about um, attending to pensioners, giving them some monies. So they are also calling on government to look in their direction as well. If they can be given some monies, perhaps 25000 every month, oh, wow. to just help sustain them for their upkeep, uh, seeing that they have limited ability mm. as it is. Mm. So that's sustainable. That's mm. yeah. We hope the government responds mm -hmm. positively for, for, for them.